This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about stranded SAT, stranded Satoshis, UTXO management, UTXO consolidation, some of these more advanced topics that you may have heard about. First thing to remember is that each Bitcoin can be divided into these subunits called Satoshis. One Bitcoin is equal to 100 million Satoshis. And this is a great thing. You don't need to buy an entire Bitcoin for $44,000. You can buy a small chunk of Bitcoin. To give you an idea how much a Satoshi is in dollar terms, $10 today is convertible into approximately 22,716 sats at today's conversion rate. So that's Satoshi's. The next thing we need to talk about are UTXOs, and it's quite a mouthful. Don't let the name scare you off. You'll become very familiar with this, and this will become part of your vocabulary. UTXO just, spent, just stands for unspent transaction output. You can see the TX in here stands for transaction, unspent transaction output. It's the output of a previous Bitcoin transaction, and it's an output that can still be spent. So UTXO is just a chunk of Bitcoin that can be spent. That's all it is. Unlike banks, unlike Ethereum, Bitcoin does not use the account model, but it actually uses something called the UTXO model. So just for example, like you might have a $1 bill and a $5 bill and a $20 bill in your wallet. This is what UTXOs are like. You might think of them as like being bills, but the difference is that UTXOs, unlike dollar bills, for example, can come UTXOs can come in almost any denomination. So you could have a 10 million and one sat UTXO. You could have a 10,340 sat UTXO. You're not limited to round numbers as you are with traditional physical cash. Now, when you send or spend Bitcoin, which is really the same thing, when you spend Bitcoin, you send it to a merchant, for example, and they give you goods or services in exchange. Sending and spending is essentially the same, unless of course you send Bitcoin to yourself at an address you control. But anytime Bitcoin is sent, that UTXO that you are sending is burned and, and destroyed essentially. And the recipient of the transaction gets a fresh UTXO. You might also get a fresh new UTXO as change. So if you spend 10,000 Satoshis and 9,000 goes to the merchant and 1,000 comes back to you, that would be the, the change, for example. What I did not include in that example is the minor transaction fee, which has become very important and will continue to become very important as the block subsidy goes down over time. So we're going to talk about that as well. I wanted to give you an example of a Bitcoin transaction so you could see what UTXOs look like. On the left side here, I'm on mempool.space. On the left side, we have the input to the transaction. This is a UTXO and the Bitcoin address associated with it. This is the amount of Bitcoin associated with it. And then we have two outputs of this transaction. The first one at the bottom here is actually a change output. We can see that it's the exact same address as the input. So what's happening here is some Bitcoin is being sent to this upper address and then the change is being sent back to the original address. And so in this case, uh, you have an input, one UTXO as an input, you have two UTXOs as outputs, and these are both spendable, uh, spendable outputs. But this input is destroyed in the process of this transaction. And then of course the miner is paid a fee. The fee rate here happens to be 412 sats per V-byte, a fairly high fee. So this is, this is what UTXOs look like. This is what a Bitcoin transaction looks like on the blockchain. Now, when you look at your software or hardware wallet, when you see your Bitcoin balance or your SATS balance as one number, what's actually happening is your hardware wallet or other wallet is adding up all of your UTXOs to give you this balance. There's not actually a balance and account. What there are are a collection of UTXOs associated with different Bitcoin addresses in that particular wallet and you control the private keys to these addresses. How can you view your UTXOs? I'm going to show you in a minute, but before I do that, if you're finding this video helpful, I just ask you to help support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. That really, really helps the channel. Hit the like button, leave a comment, suggestion, question, topic for a future video, and share this video as well with friends or family members. So the question, how can you view your own UTXOs? This is usually under the coin control section of your product. So if you're using a Trezor, you can look up coin control in Trezor Suite. I will link to this in the description notes below. Likewise, if you're still using Ledger, 
you can view your UTXOs, I believe, using uh, this link, which I'll put in the description notes below. We're going to be using the Sparrow wallet today, the Sparrow desktop or laptop wallet, which I really, really like as an interface. I'll link to this video in the description notes below. If you haven't been watching my daily videos, it might make sense to pause this video right now and watch the following three videos to sort of catch up. The first one here on the Sparrow wallet, how to set it up for desktop or laptop. The second video, how to connect a hardware wallet like a Ledger or Jade to the Sparrow wallet. And finally, the mempool, which we'll be referring to in this video. If you want to know briefly how to connect your hardware wallet to Sparrow so you can view your UTXOs, what you can do is you can just uh, install Sparrow and then go up here and type in new wallet that will open up a wallet like this. And then you have the option under settings, you would just click connected hardware wallet and it would give you a choice of air gapped hardware wallets or actually plugging in your wallet to your laptop or desktop. You can scan it and then add that to the wallet. So that's exactly how you add a hardware wallet and link it with Sparrow. And then of course, Sparrow is being linked either to your own node or to a uh, an external server or node. In this example, I'm actually using the testnet here. So what you're going to see are not real Bitcoin, but testnet Bitcoin. So after you connect your hardware wallet to Sparrow, and you could connect your ledger, you could connect your treasure, you could connect your cold card, you will have something that looks like this. You have all the transactions here. For example, in this wallet, I have almost 6 million Satoshis currently valued at uh, $2,636. And then you have send and receive addresses here. And then we're going to go down here and click on UTXOs. In this wallet, you can see that I have a number of UTXOs of various amounts. They range anywhere from 5.2 million sats, 500,000 sats, 100,000 sats, all the way down to 1,000 sats. These are the addresses associated with them. You can see they're not BC1 addresses because this is testnet. And so these are testnet addresses, TB1, TB1Q. And then you have some labels here as well. This is very important as you begin to get into this to label different transactions. And you can just sort of double click here and you can change these. So these are all individual UTXOs. And you can see here that I did reuse an address here. And I did this on purpose, obviously, for this video. But I sent Satoshis. I'm pretending they're from a KYC exchange. These are obviously just testnet sats. But I sent 100,000 sats to one address, and then I sent 50,000 sats to the same address. And that's why we're getting these little red exclamation mark warnings about this. You're not supposed to reuse addresses. But you can see here that even if you resend uh, even if you send sats to the same address and you do it twice, you'll create two different UTXOs. Here's a 100,000 UTXO and a 50,000 sat UTXO. Again, the wallet is adding all of these up here to come up with this balance of how many sats I have. So that is the, the introduction to sats. That's the introduction to UTXOs and what they look like inside this tab. Again, you have the transactions tab and you have the UTXOs tab, uh, which Sparrow makes very uh, easy to see. And so you may want to use this even if you're still using a ledger or treasure, you may want to use uh, connect it to Sparrow Wallet. And it's very nice to see all the UTXOs here as well. So then, then the next thing we wanted to talk about are stranded sats or stranded satoshis. And this is a situation where a UTXO becomes essentially economically unspendable or there's no reason to spend it. So let me show you how this might work. What we're going to do is we're going to first uh, get a receive address here. We're basically be sending some Bitcoin to ourselves. We'll go to UTX, UTXOs and let's take this 50,000 sat UTXO. We're going to send it to myself. So I'm going to paste in this receive address that I just got. We'll just call this a test. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can see that I'm sending approximately 50,000 sats. And then the fee rate is down here, how, many, how much you're paying in terms of Satoshis per data storage or the amount of data you take up in that particular block. One sat per vbyte is really as low as it gets. We're probably never going to see that rate again. And then there's a slider here that allows you to adjust what fee rate you're willing to pay. If we take a look at mempool.space, which I made this video about, again, if you don't know what mempool, mempools are, the mempool or many mempools, you can watch this video, which I'll link to below. Mempool.space, you can either host your own instance of it or you can use the website version of it. And this gives you a very good idea 
of what's going on with the blockchain. These are blocks that have already been mined on the right side here. These are blocks that have yet to be mined. And what we're gonna be looking at today here are the transaction fees. We can see high priority, medium priority, low priority, no priority, and then down here purging, if you put a fee rate that's less than 24.1 right now, you'll be kicked out of most uh, node mempools. So again, these are transaction fee rates, how much you pay in Satoshis per the amount of data that your transaction takes up. So in terms of talking about stranded sats, let's go back to Sparrow. And we can see here, I'm trying to send 50,000 sats. And let's just do a quick reminder. So we're at approximately 59 sats per V-byte. So let's go in here and adjust it. Again, we're on testnet here. This isn't the real the real, um, the real, real Bitcoin network. But let's go here and we'll add, we'll put it at approximately 60 sats per V-byte. We can see the fee we're going to be paying at that point will be 6,561 sats. That's about $2.89. So here's our input right here. We're spending 50,000 sats to ourself and it, we will be receiving 43,439 sats. And then the miner will get this fee, which is currently very high as a percentage of the amount that I'm sending. It's a 15% fee. And again, this is not calculated as a percentage, but it's calculated as what fee rate you're willing to pay. And so if you take a good look, if you take a look at mempool.space, this can give you a good idea of what you need to pay to get into the next block. If you want to get into the next block, you really need to pay somewhere between 57 and 60 sats per V-byte. We can see in the past block that was just that was just mined, people paid anywhere from 60 to 454 sats per V-byte. And if you don't want, uh, if you want your block maybe to be included within the next 24 hours roughly, and it really does depend on where fee rates go, you can bid 50 sats per V-byte. But I, what I wanted to demonstrate here is that there's a certain level of fees where this UTXO, this 50,000 sat UTXO, again, that's approximately what it is, it becomes economically unspendable under certain certain fee rate certain transaction fee rate conditions and we can do that if we just scroll up here and we keep scrolling we'll see the amount that i'm sending going down and the amount of the fee going up we'll keep going and at some point the here we go it says insufficient funds so at this point the fee is almost 50,000 sats i only have 333 sats left to spend and at this point, it won't even let me send it. So if the fee rate gets to somewhere around 500 sats per V-byte, this 50,000 sat UTXO is essentially stranded. And you could send it, you could send it, and most of the fee here would go to the miner if I did this. It doesn't really make sense to do it. If you want to send this, you're going to have to wait until fee rates come back down. And this is how UTXOs can get stranded. If fee rates were to spike to 500 and stay up there permanently, this UTXO would essentially be permanently unspendable. And this is one of the things we're going to be talking about. This is part of the high transaction fee environment that we're currently experiencing. And that we should probably expect to continue at least over the long term as the miner block subsidy goes down the 6.25 Bitcoin that's trending down to zero. So miners will be making their revenues from transaction Fees. So one thing you can do, one way of avoiding having a stranded UTXO in a high fee environment is to combine UTXO. So let's just clear this UTXO here. We're going to go back here and we're going to combine some of our UTXO. So I have, it's very important again to label where these Satoshis came from. I'm just pretending that these sats came from John. I have three 8,000 sat UTXOs. If you hold down the shift button on your keyboard, you can select three of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a UTXO consolidation. I'm going to combine these into a single UTXO by sending them to myself. So I select them here under, again, we're under the UTXO tab. I select them. I click send selected and it gets, again, it's 8,000 sats times three. So send selected 24,000 sats. And then I need to get a receive address. So I'll just go right here. I'll get this fresh address. I'll go back to send and I'll paste it in here. I'll just type in the label consolidation from John. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all of these. We're gonna say we can just do it at one sat per V byte. And so we have these three inputs. We have 8,000 sats, 8,000 sats, 8,000 sats. They're all being sent to myself. They're being consolidated. I will receive 23,755 sats. And then the miner, again, this is test net, so there's not a real miner, but the miner will receive 1% of those, approximately 245 sats. And so this kind of consolidation would make sense 
under the conditions of one sat per fee byte fee rates, we can see at a certain point the amount of fees that I'll be paying uh, right here, for example, if I just keep going up and I'm at, let's say, um, call it 96 sats per fee byte, let's just go down a little bit, let's say 90, call it 90 sats per fee byte, my fee is going to be 21,000 sats, 21,931 sats, and then I'll only have about 2,000 sats left. So it really makes sense to do these consolidations only in a low fee environment. And what a low fee environment is, it's really going to depend on how much data you have in the transactions you're combining. So this is one reason to become very familiar with Sparrow and to play around with this slider. But let's just say uh, transaction fees are still very low, one sat per V-byte, and so I can set it to that. I'll be paying 245 sats in a fee, basically paying 11 cents to send $10.45. That's a pretty good deal. What I do now is I just click Create Transaction, and again, this will show me I'm combining three UTXOs from John. I'm consolidating them. I'm paying a minor fee. I'm going to finalize transaction for signing. I'm going to sign the transaction, and then I'm going to broadcast the transaction to the network. And this is being sent, obviously, on testnet. We can see that there's a new uh, there's a new transaction here. Then if I go back to the UTXO tab here, I can see the consolidation from John was received. I basically combined those three 8,000 sat UTXOs into a single UTXO. So we can again see it's a single UTXO that was sent to this address. It's the same, uh, same wallet that I control here. And of course, the minor fee was subtracted out. So instead of having 24,000 sats, I have 23,755 sats. So let's review what we did. We connected a hardware wallet. We checked out our UTXOs here. We combined them and sent them back to ourselves. So we basically, we selected them here. We said, said send selected. We went to the receive address. We got a fresh receive address. We copied that. We pasted it back in. And then we signed and broadcast the transaction. I know that's a lot in one video to cram into one video, uh, but I want to begin to talk about these issues on the channel. So when you're thinking about doing a UTXO consolidation, it's important to keep in mind where transaction fees are. Another thing to talk about, and again, this is a very deep rabbit hole, but something called the common input ownership heuristic. And this is the assumption, the rule of thumb that chain surveillance companies will make when they look at the blockchain. They'll assume that UTXOs that are combined or spent together will be assumed by them to have a common owner. So when you do a consolidation, you noticed in the example I did that I was combining sats and UTXOs from John, from a single person. Uh, but what you don't want to do is combine sats from different sources that by your combining them may link them together on chain. So for example, you don't want to you don't want to combine KYC sats with non-KYC sats. So if you bought if you bought Bitcoin on Swan or Coinbase or River or Kraken or Binance and you gave them your personal information, you gave them a withdrawal address and so they know that that Bitcoin's associated with you, you would not want to combine that with a more non-KYC or more anonymous Bitcoin that you bought on a peer-to-peer exchange for example so these this get, does get very complicated this is why this is a, a more advanced uh, video today but the two main things you want to consider when doing utxo management utxo consolidation and coin control is the privacy issues which i've just briefly alluded to here as well as transaction fee issues we're going to be talking more about stranded sats how to get your sats off of on chain and into a lightning channel these are all things i hope to cover in the channel going forward but i want to get us up to a basic level of understanding utxo management what utxos are and what stranded satoshis are if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when i publish my next video and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below thanks all for watching and i'll see you in the next video